So welcome everybody to uh, TLC 2021 and the session Client Experiences of the Learn Ultra Course View, which is going to be a panel session. On this session, we have Harriet Walshaw, who is a portfolio manager at Northumbria University. Dr. Malcolm Murray, who is head of digital learning at Durham University. Hamish Loveday, Digital Education Services Manager from the University of Dundee, and Bethan Wynne Jones, who is a senior learning technologist at Bangor University. I'm not going to try and say it in Welsh. Um, so, welcome to you all. Thank you for joining this uh, session today. And what we wanted to do in this session is look at your experiences of moving to Learn Ultra. Um, so, we're going to talk about what the drivers were to get you there, what the move has been like, what implementation you put in place, what training and support you put in place, what benefits and drawbacks uh, there have been to doing it um, and perhaps including the pedagogic angle as well would be very interesting for this audience. So without further ado I am going to stop sharing that slide because I think people might want to put gallery view on. Now we've got the new facility within um, collaborate so if anybody's not used it before it's up at the top right hand side and you will see um, that option available to you so that you can hopefully get all the speakers tiled and, and see us as a group so okay so let's start off so let's have a talk about what people's drivers were to move to learn ultra course view and Malcolm would you like to kick us off and tell us what your drivers were there at Durham yeah happy to so I'm going to concentrate just on ultra course view rather than the drivers for SAS as well you know, and I think part of it was the lure of the new you know wanting to give our staff and students something that looked significantly different to the sort of classic learn ultra so sort of classic sort of nine one they had before uh, we were going for a fresh start not a lift and shift so it was a chance for our staff really to to redesign reflect and think about how they could teach on this new platform we like the consistency of the appearance and workflows that are an ultra course view uh, we wanted to leave the clunky experience uh, of the sort of multiple paths and long development history of classic Blackboard behind. Uh, we were very keen on learning modules. You know, I think they've been really nicely implemented and we're pushing those towards our staff. And there were some other features that were really uh, attractive to us, ways to bring students into the conversation a bit more. So things like the course conversations and the revised discussion boards in Ultra Course View, we could really see those working well in our modules uh, and and the other thing being a bit cynical is that you know ultra course view we think is going to be blackboard development focus so we want it to be you know on the new platform uh, and and getting advantage of all the new features and for our staff we only wanted them to have to change the content once rather than having to migrate on to sas with classic sort of course view and then later on migrate again to ultra course view Excellent, thank you. And Beth Ann, what about yourself there at Bangor University? What were you, you went last summer for the whole institution? What were the drivers there to move you across? I mean, as well in the middle of a pandemic as well. Last summer you were in the middle of a pandemic, so a move then. Interesting one. You tell us more. It was indeed. Um, we had moved to SAS in the summer of 2018. And then ultra navigation in the summer of 2019. And as you've just said, Gillian, yes, the plan was to move um, in the summer of 2020. Um, and despite of the pandemic, or you could say because of the pandemic, we did actually um, move. Um, and very similar to what Malcolm has just said, very similar reasons, um, possibly the first one from a design perspective, really. Um, Ultra course view, much um, simplified, streamlined um, interface and designed for mobile use. Um, so fully responsive. Um, and I've got written down here, yes, no longer receiving comments on the clunkiness of Blackboard. So very similar. Um, 
And the fact that we're moving to the ultra course view and to blended online learning at the same time um, possibly made it easier for those who weren't using all the features in Blackboard. Um, trying to get those on board made it, I think, easier for them. Um, and you could say staff were um, possibly expecting or prepared to learn new things. People, they were seeing um, people all over the world experimenting with new tools and technologies, grandparents using Zoom, so possibly more willing um, to engage. And then the second thing really was accessibility. We'd had a, um, a JISC accessibility snapshot in 2018 and we needed to improve the accessibility of our content. So Ultra is helping us um, do that. You know, things like content um, can't be more than two folders deep, for example. And we did introduce Ally at the same time. So of course that's um, helping us as well but we're only now moving to actively promote Ally. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. That's that's really good overview, I think a high level overview from both of you about all the, um, the positive drivers or, uh, you know, even if one was not mo moving away from the clunky 9.1 um, to the to learn ultra, you know, with those, new features in there and it's good to hear how you know bringing in those student conversations the learning modules how it's appropriate for for blended learning the online learning and more for accessibility so thank you to both of you from that um let's have a think um if if hamish or harriet want to add anything i think we've got time if we want to add to that before we move on to the next question if not then we can move on to the next question hamish harriet do you have anything to add to that are you i don't think so i think i think most people's reasons for the move tend to to, to be very similar yeah i i would agree i mean for it, everyone's sort of touched upon it but you know it's that strategic driver of that sort of technology was going to become more and more part of delivery and so we needed a, um, a platform which was sort of better suited for sort of the modern time as opposed to sort of the clunkiness of 9-1. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Indeed, modern times and that modern time came very quickly this last year. It feels like we moved on leap years in 12 months. <laughs> um, OK, so let's move on to the next question. And I'm going to ask this of Hamish first. And, and how did you uh, move across to learn ultra? Was it a big bang? Was it a phased approach? Perhaps you could explain that to us. Yeah, well, Probably the first thing to say is we had a plan and then lockdown came along, um, probably similar to a lot of people. Um, um, our initial plan, we were always going to go with a big bang. Um, we just have preferred the big bang to be a little more planned before it happened. So initially we had a sort of multi-year plan, move to SAS, ultra base, start piloting the online courses. And we should on that timetable have been prepping for ultra courses this summer. Um, ready for the next academic year. Um, but we made the decision last year with the lockdown uh, when we, like many of you out there, were being asked to retrain our entire academic uh, um, um, body and students as well. And so we just made the decision if we're going to be putting our resource and effort into uh, uh, that kind of retraining, then we should just bite the bullet and do it with Ultra. Um, so uh, uh, we went ahead with that. We put in some emergency measures, with, like we immediately gave everybody as soon as that decision was made. Everybody got a sandbox and we poured into that sandbox every bit of information, hint tip we could possibly think of and just told them to hack away at it. Complain about the things you don't want, complain about uh, speak about the things you find to other people and just try and get that buzz going. Uh, we did the kind of usual, we implemented the mass online training program, which honestly, uh, there, are, there are limitations to online training as we all know, but there are positives about uh, being able to just run it like a machine in some ways. Um, and ultimately we just went, when people got their modules made for 2021, they were in ultra and and, and we kind of dealt with it. Um, just kind of reflecting on that kind of approach that, that 
I think a, a kind of lesson for how we we did it and what we were forced into doing is I think ultimately when you're doing big changes, decisive action often helps you out. Um, because universities are complex places. Um, there are so many different cats to herd, um, put it that way. Um, so actually having this big impetus of doing the Big Bang with the extra added thing of, of the lockdown and the need to move to online, it actually saved us a lot of hassle because we got past some of the fear and the worry because people were focusing on other things and just got ultra in there which allowed us to then move on to the important things like the pedagogy the teaching the students the people um that kind of thing um and now yes uh, we are a year ahead of schedule which is often nice Brilliant, thank you. What about Harriet? Are you there at Northumbria? What was your um, so, approach to move? Our, our journey was probably slightly different because, you know, we actually planned it because we didn't have to respond quickly to a global pandemic. So that probably did provide a number of benefits for us. Um, so we obviously, ours was a phased delivery. Um, we went to base nav in for the start of the academic year of 2018 2019 now i will be honest when we originally started planning we had wanted to go full ultra but for as many of you have been aware the sort of the, the functionality on course view just didn't have that parity between 9-1 which we really needed at that time so we made a deliberate decision not to put undue stress on um, our academic academic colleagues to try and you know move to something which wasn't quite there yet so we, we did it on a stage approach so we went base nav sat obviously and um ally for that 18 19 and then we were able to sort of prepare for 19 20 um for the ultra course view so for us um we started the academic year um on ultra course view at that time um and we, we did a minor pilot, but that was primarily because we'd had a program being launched early doors anyway. And so it gave us the opportunity to just to really test that out. But that was more for the training and the, the development side of the um, pilot as opposed to sort of the actual functionality of the product. Um, but ours was phased in that way. But I think it's important to know at no point did we ever consider um, doing sort of de uh, departments or faculty split. We always wanted to do everything at an institutional level so that all staff and students would have the same experience at the same time, that consistency. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've got a question. I'm going to ask it now because it is uh, in with the flow and it was from Mike asking, Hamish, did you um, have any templates there? for your staff to use? Yeah, we did. Um, they were a little, it was a program that was a little rushed. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way is like, because introducing module templates was a very big deal. We sort of had templates before, but uh, they weren't much in terms of shaping the course design. Um, but um, introducing templates really was key because so many people, especially in the time frame kind of just wanted a plug and play situation just tell us where to put the stuff because everybody is so tired and so stressed but the bonus of that is this year we're taking a much more considered approach with the discussions with qa and the individual schools and coming up with specific templates for each discipline in school and things so yeah the templates is a really good way to go yeah to support that we, we have a template and one of the things we also build into those templates is sort of guidance material for both staff and students so that you know they can sort of the information they need is to hand and they're not having to look for it um so we're on our sort of second iteration of the template and what's been sort of what's quite reassuring is we've only been making minor adjustments this year um and we haven't had um, particularly at a module level at a program level we've made a few um sort of bigger, more fundamental changes, but at a module level, it, it's just sort of slight adjustments as opposed to um, sort of whole scale rechange. Yeah, that's interesting. And tees up very nicely to the next question about training and support. And I'm going to direct this to Beth Ann first, but what training and support did you do there at Bangor for your uh, staff and for your students as well? 
Yes, we did um, do a lot of training, um, actually. Um, our main priority was to provide uh, bilingual training. Um, so we had to provide all our support material in both Welsh and in English. I think 20% of our students speak Welsh and that jumps to about 70% of staff who are able to speak at least some Welsh. Um, so we created um, a Blackboard Ultra staff development, a staff training site and enrolled all staff onto it and used the learning modules that's already mentioned um, as a feature to separate the languages and the topics. So it's a really good way of using it in a bilingual um, context using the learning modules. I think it's visibly easier um, to see the difference. We created our own resources and links to Blackboard resources. Um, Blackboard do provide Welsh medium uh, Blackboard help pages. So we, um, we use those heavily. Um, and I'd like to thank Blackboard for continued support to um, the Welsh language. Um, yes, we did create our own um, banger based videos and so on. Um, held a number of workshops. And I think we had more attending the workshops than we did um, more attending online um, than had we held these face to face in Bangor, um, you know, post uh, pre COVID, it, uh, it might have been different. We wouldn't have had so many attending. Um, we did purchase some online training from Blackboard, which we were able to record and share with others. Um, and followed a number of um, webinars. Um, we've already mentioned templates, yes. Uh, we also created templates for staff, uh, and which was agreed by our teaching and learning committee. So, um, you know, any comments we had, at least we were able to direct, no, it has been agreed. Those are the templates um, for you to use. Um, and again, I think it was Harriet who mentioned um, we've provided a, a checklist this year. We've improved the template and provided a kind of hidden document um, as a training resource in the template on all modules. Um, you know, things like how to set up your um, Panopto folder, copying content and so on. One thing in hindsight, I think we would have provided more assessments, more training on assessment earlier in the year because some of the um, issues we had um, with assessments. But um, that's where we are at the moment. Yeah. OK, thank you. And Harriet, what about you? What did you do there with your training and support? So for us, again, yeah, it was a multi-stage process because of our de the delivery method. So stage one was really sort of the introduction to Blackboard um, based navigation um, where sort of we encouraged people to attend training, but, it, you know, there was no sort of active driver because really their, the delivery on, on the original that hadn't changed and base navigation is not that difficult to navigate yourself around so you really didn't need that much training for when it was for ultra for all i think one you know um it's already been mentioned we did create a sandbox for all um, co um colleagues to uh, sort of play in and in order to sort of access the sandbox it, they, it was a bit of a carrot and sticker level of come to your sort of face-to-face -face training session and then get access to the sandbox and so that was used as a part of it. So for us, we had the opportunity to do face-to-face -face sessions. 80% of our academic staff attended. And I think it's worth noting, it was only four people delivering that training. And so it wasn't that we had, you know, lots, a huge training team. You know, it was a very small, very dedicated team. Um, and they supported that through. And so during sort of, um, for it's, trainings became available from February all the way through to the start of the academic year and I think the other thing to worth noting again with the efforts of our training team is they were forever having to keep up to date with what changes were happening in Ultra because obviously if you think during that year there was huge development taking place and so they were forever having to sort of update and keep themselves up um, refreshed of and um, to take that forward 
And then the big piece of training is kind of that live support because obviously SaaS continuous delivery training just doesn't stop. So what we um, what the team did was they've developed a drop-in centre, um, which obviously once COVID kicked in, it, they moved from the coffee shops into um, into sort of virtual um, drop-ins and it's just continued and from strength to strength during um, sort of the pandemic. And they also rebuilt um, Tell Central, um, so a website with all of the sort of learning materials, all of the guidance, um, you know, both whether it be in a PDF form or in an e-learning form, and then the, that constant um, reassurance and, you know, you know many of them, but I, I'm going to give a shout out to Lee and his team because the amount of effort they put in is just phenomenal. And I think what's great is um, the university and our academic staff really appreciate what they what they offer and provide. And, and indeed, yeah, the uh, thanks for that. The um, indeed and recognising the others, and it should be recognised that they won a Catalyst Award last year, didn't they? One of our Blackboard Catalyst Awards um, at Northumbria for the implementation. So you can find out more about that in the Catalyst Awards part of the community site. Um, and also, I'd encourage others who were doing big projects because I know everybody's worked so hard for this last year to think about Catalyst Awards for the future. But moving on to the next question, and this is. A about what benefits have you seen uh, in moving to Learn Ultra and for maybe students, for staff and for the university and what drawbacks have there been as well? And Hamish, would you like to answer that one first? Yeah, certainly. Um, like overall, the, 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 the biggest benefit we've had, I think I alluded it to it before, um, that, that in a way the move to Ultra isn't about ultra in many ways um for us it was about spending a bit of time focusing on the quality of the vle experience um using it as a catalyst to retrain people using it like even even kind of internally from a service point of view using it as an opportunity to go back and do all of those things that we'd been putting off year after year after year around admin and, and processing and things like that so uh, it, it was the the opportunity that it gave you as the biggest one um to focus on ultra itself um, um i think somebody mentioned consistent user experience um that has been flagged so much in the last 12 months um i think there is a, an understandable habit that a lot of lecturers and a lot of us can focus too much on on the immediate course that we're delivering and 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 not thinking in terms of the student point of view of how many different modules they go in and see how many different interfaces they see how many different styles of delivery they come across in a university we all know universities we're really good at buying lots of different tools that look totally different and work totally different so that consistency is really important um and and from the feedback we're getting from students it's worked really well um accessibility um, i think somebody mentioned this a little bit in the chat things like the use of documents our ally score is much improved um and this i, I forgot which university it was hopefully somebody's here can say but i was at a, an ally talk a couple of years ago you were at it jillian actually when the person was presenting that from their statistics around accessibility the move to ultra had been the biggest driver towards accessible uh, materials being presented because of the move to using the documents uh, rather than putting files up um, and using those html driven documents just automatically lends a certain level of accessibility to it um, and, and especially accessibility more important than ever before um, in terms of the kind of things that haven't worked so well um, i think one that i think everybody will know about is the sort of feature disparity um, it's very hard asking your user uh, your users to move from one thing to another um, because they will go with a fine tooth comb and spot the things they can't do anymore and they will highlight them more than the new things um, that they can now do is, is the nature of being human um, but in particular like the group release recently 
so happy so happy group releases come along and i'm sure everybody has a similar perspective on that um we're still missing a lot around the evaluation tools like performance dashboard and things like that there is a bit of a hole around the course analytics tab which i believe you can buy an add-on or, or or something to start populating that um but especially in the last 12 months people have been asking about that that kind of missing information you can get from the evaluation tools in the past LTI has been patchy, uh, but overall improved, although I understand that's all about the relationship between universities, Blackboard and the LTI providers. Turnitin's had some, some, some works, but I think we have a lot to thank Northumbria um, for paving the way uh, for us on, on that kind of one. So it works, but there are still quirks. Um, and the last thing I'd sort of say, I, I still think there's work to be done in the ultra experience around the communication tools. There is messaging, there's announcements and things like that, but the reports we get from users is they're still not terribly well synced as an experience. And email is still for a lot of our users, uh, the dominant means of communication. We kind of like to move away from that um, as much as we can. Um, just one last thing, I, sorry, I'm, I'm probably taking a bit too much time. I want to sort of say with this about lessons learned from this and the kind of drawbacks of it. If you're going to do this, get the resource to do it properly. Um, we managed to secure a budget for licensing and things like that. Didn't do so well in terms of getting people. And that's something I think we missed a bit of an opportunity if, if, if we'd front loaded the resources so that we could take real advantage of the opportunity. Like, I think we did really well considering, but more resource could have made more of an impact on not just the people's ability to use Ultra, but, but, but the, uh, the user experience they're providing, the, the quality of the teaching they're providing through it. Thank you, Hamish. And Malcolm, so, you know, what, what have been the benefits there and were there any drawbacks for your students, staff and the university in the move? Thanks, Julian. I mean, echo what Hamish said, and there's been a lot of good points raised in the chat as well. You know, I think groups is an, is something where Blackboard have taken a very different view of what groups are in Learn Ultra. So there are now areas where you know, it's a student facing thing. So you might create a group assignment and, and those features work very well. But if you're used to a more traditional group that has a sort of staff member as tutor and you're creating groups facing, Andy Yule was posting about that earlier as well. That that's something that we've had to approach differently and consider using you know other products like Teams or Zoom to to facilitate that. I'm not sure you're allowed to use those words in a Blackboard presentation, but hey, I just have. Uh, I think in general, one thing that staff like is that their the courses look nice. You know, it's very easy to create consistent content. You've not got lot you know a hundred different typefaces and colors, and it just looking really messy. You can build clean content. Uh, although ironically, they want a few more places you can add images. So they've they've really lost the banner and a lot of the initial text looks like or initial course content is a sort of stream of text and they want to be able to break it up with images, breaks for, you know, term one, term two, term three or something like that. So they want a little bit more personalization. And, you know, I think there's some interesting things coming with the course overlay and things that, that may help there. Uh, Documentation wise, we struggled a bit because on the Blackboard help site, the ultra course view and the classic course view are still in the same page. So when staff go for help, they're seeing two different sets of instructions. Really pleased to see that Blackboard are going to fork that. And you know, that can't happen soon enough for our point of view, because we are saying at Durham, ultra course view is the only thing there. So, uh, you know, just use the ultra advice. For, for students, the feedback's been really positive, you know, particularly new students, they've just picked it up, uh, they've liked it, they like the appearance, uh, they like the fact it works well in mobile. For our returning students who've been using sort of classic beforehand, it's taken a, a little bit more time to get your head around it. Uh, I think staff have, as Hamish has alluded to, complained about email a bit, that you can't really target emails, and there seems to be a drive to messages, and we've still got people who want to be able to easily send emails to groups or just to students, not all the staff on the course. Uh, I think from the only thing that students have tripped up on really is the ellipsis tool is a little bit hidden. So if they want to actually download some of the attached documents, some of them haven't been able to find that, you know, 
all the sort of ally integration is really easy and right in your face with the accessible content icon there and it, that's taken a little bit of training but in general you know it has been good and, and it's also helped us with the the big jump is that for a support point of view if someone sends a screenshot you can tell straight away whether they're on you know we're in this migration from the pilot to mainstreaming uh, ultra you can see straight away is it on learn ultra or is it still in nine one because it looks so different that's great thank you right final question in one sentence what would you say to others on this call who might be thinking about moving to learn ultra course view and uh, Harriet would you like to answer that first yeah I, I think the one thing I would say is we wouldn't go back so take the step and go forward right thank you Bethan would you go next um, yes, um, I asked my our deputy director of um, digital services and his sentence was ultra has now reached a level of maturity that you should be asking yourself what's stopping you. Excellent. And, and Hamish. Um, I'll play mirror stuff I've already said, but it's essentially moving to ultra shouldn't actually be about the move to ultra. It's an opportunity to refocus on on what actually matters and you can just trust ultra will do the job. Thank you. And Malcolm. I mean, I would say do it, but do it as Hamish has said, you know, think about it first and with the resource. It is a different experience. And I would just say when you're talking to your staff and students, it's a new system. You know, approach it as if you'd switched VLE, not just it's an, an upgrade to the existing system. You need to unlearn a lot of the workflows to get the best out of it. Excellent. Some some great advice and insights there. Uh, thank you very much. So we've got uh, about eight, seven, eight minutes or so where we can take questions. And uh, I would ask, it'd be lovely if somebody would come on mic and ask a question. So if anybody is feeling courageous and would like to come on mic, could you raise your hand? If anybody's feeling shy, you can post them in the chat or maybe you've not got a microphone, but it'd be nice if you uh, would come on mic. Nobody is volunteering at the moment. Uh, I'm going to give it a bit of time. I've got a question. Um, did you um, take part in any of the Blackboard programs that we provide free of charge to help you with your thinking to move across to Ultra? And if so, what was your experience of that? And does anybody want to volunteer to answer that? I'll answer. Um, no, we didn't. But uh, what I would say is that the team we worked with as uh, as part of the transition, and many of you are actually on, are on the call, um, were part and parcel of our journey. And so we didn't work with, you know, that, spe the, that specific team, but the number of teams we did work with helped us deliver and allow us to sort of transition to our timeline. Can I come in, Gillian, to say we did in Bangor, we did follow some of the um, the move to ultra navigation and to ultra course view, those free um, webinars you, you, you're referring to. I can't remember the exact titles, um, but we, we did follow them. Um, they were running that kind of eight week um, sessions and you could join and then they were recorded. Um, it, that found them really useful. Yes, yes. Yep, thank you. Malcolm, Hamish, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, we did use some of them, you know, particularly again, this sort of introduction to ultra course view and ultra based navigation. I think the problem for us was it was a bit too broken up and they were trying to cover ultra base nav, you know, with the 9 1 interface and with ultra course view. So some of the content wasn't, was more confusing our staff than than helping what we did use a lot of was the collective wisdom of people on this call you know so we spent a lot of time talking to harriet and colleagues at northumbria talking to sarah and colleagues up at aberdeen and so on just you know what was the experience like on the ground and, and what were the things that we needed to get right and they wished they'd done differently 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. We've got some questions in now. And just, just to finish on that, if anybody's not aware, we do provide programs um, which we can provide details of. They're in the community site. Understanding the Ultra Experience is one. Ultra Push Seminar is another to help people understand what's involved with the moves or set up courses and so on. And obviously, you know, you've got us as a team and all the SEs and your account execs to support anybody moving across. So don't hesitate to ask us about those. Um, so I think the first question in was from Nathan, who says, have you found the community site useful in answering uh, finding answers to questions and getting help through the move to ultra. I think Malcolm, you've just said that you you found the community site useful. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? I, I think it is useful, and it's also useful for digging up some of the issues that you know the unexpected changes in SaaS, which there are always going to be some things that aren't documented, or aren't flagged, uh, hmm. and and just sometimes just venting. So, you know, the, the issue around teaching assistants suddenly not being able to enroll people with different roles. You know, was it us, was something wrong? And suddenly you see other clients coming in and the discussions there, and then people from Blackboard coming in explaining why it was done in education. So yes, it is useful. Okay, anybody else want to add to that? Yeah. I'd probably just add, um, it, it can be quite difficult, because I think as Malcolm said, um, went and spoke to people like Sarah and things up in Aberdeen. It's It, it can be difficult with universities, I think, um, with these kind of community sites and, and, and things that are about establishing that communication because universities will always prefer to speak just directly to other colleagues there. But I think the Blackboard community site is a wonderful sort of extra hub on top of that sort of underlying network that's there. Um, and I think the upgrade that's happened to it is making it more useful um than it was before because previously i hadn't had much to do with it but now i'm spending a lot of time thinking i really need to write more in there because there's much more to give and much more to get back out of it yeah okay and if, it, if it's okay i'll move on to this last question because we've just got a couple of minutes left and i didn't want to miss russ's question uh which i've now lost let me <laughs> Uh, sorry. Oh, here we go. How do you deal with the questions from course organizers? Quotation marks. But we did it this way in original. How do we get people to rethink their course approaches for the updated view? And, and that's, you know, fundamentally coming down to pedagogy and accessibility. So does anybody want to take that question? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Um, I think for us, it comes back to sort of your, your training and support offering and the team behind that. So um, I know the team, particularly during the drop-in sessions, would have people come along of, I've always done this, how do I do this now? And then it's, it's talking through what is the actual objective they're trying to deliver. And when you understand that, then they can say, oh, well, yes, you did it like this, but this is how you can do it now. And it's 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 changing the mentality of what is it you want what's the outcome as opposed to the methods you, you used to take to get that outcome um and so it comes back to having a really strong team who can support great can i just hey Michelle, go sorry for it. okay if, yeah if i can like adding to that um like that is absolutely uh, um, um, essential is being able to explain things in that kind of logical way because it really is academics by nature do tend to react well to to having an understanding and not just being told um, but sort of possibly on the negative side something I've spent a lot of time explaining the nature of service delivery um, to people in the last year and and so not just speaking about the logic for why things changing things like that but also trying to get across this understanding that to provide services for a whole university you're always going to come across things that people don't agree with um and just being really honest about that kind of thing it's almost like i think sometimes i think people who get into e-learning by nature tend to be very helpful people um in my experience it's generally true um but we've learned how to be a bit more professional in that by showing sometimes we can't please everybody. So things that people don't like, just be upfront and explain there are things, it's just part of the change. This is why we did it. 
it's never going to be perfect and we have to make decisions that don't make, make that people aren't always going to agree with excellent and carol's just saying there in the chat couldn't agree more hamish i could see nods going on around the room and and we are at time now um i think there's some you know great uh, discussions there, some great points that you've made and some hints and tips for other people to think about. Um, there's so many more questions I've got in my head, I could really carry on this discussion, but we will draw time there. Um, so thank you to our panellists today for sharing their experiences. Hopefully that's inspired, assured, given some useful hints and tips to other people who are thinking of that move. So thank you to you all. Um, we will um, finish here and hit our next presentation, which will start in five minutes at 11.30 BST, um, is actually from an academic himself who moved to Ultra Course View from Neil McLennan of University of Aberdeen, who's going to be talking about it from his perspective as the director of a program and an academic teaching and online master's program. So stay tuned for that presentation. Otherwise, please join me in thanking all the panelists here today. Thank you.